Wow. So performance anxiety, I thought it was gone on the last time I walked out onto the stage of Crawford Hall, but <laughs> wow. And you guys have to understand that um, this honor is made so much sweeter by the fact that this is my first graduation because I missed the first two. <laughs> yeah, so um, thank you everyone. Thank you faculty, staff, distinguished guests, families, including my own. And most importantly, thank you, UNCSA class of 2022. I have a notion of what you've been through, and I am so proud of the work you have done. It is an honor to be sharing this moment with you, celebrating the milestone of your commencement, and expressing my gratitude to an institution that had such a profound effect on the trajectory of my own life. My time at the school launched me onto an incredible path of discovery, just as your experiences here will guide and inspire you as you begin your own journey. I grew up in a small town in North Carolina where three of my four grandparents had second grade educations and all four worked in a local cotton mill. When I was very young, my grandmother would wrap me in a blanket and hold me on her lap while we swung in the front porch swing and she told me stories and she sang me songs, words and music mingling with the sweet honeysuckle breeze. And when I was a little older, my grandfather would take me for walks down an overgrown ravine near the house and he would pull out his prized pocket knife and show me how to make a little flute from poplar branches. Later still on weekends, my grandmother, my grandparents would take me for drives on country roads and we would stop by plowed fields and search for arrowheads. And then we'd wander down and look for violets by the edge of the woods and my grandmother would tell me stories about how her mother made medicine from plants for the 13 children when they were growing up on a remote farm. On hot afternoons, we would look for shade, a place to eat our buttermilk biscuits and drink our sweet tea, and we would just sit and listen to the sounds of birdsong, the high soprano keening of crickets, and to all the exuberant music of nature. Though I couldn't have articulated it at the time, the seamlessness of being, the sense of being connected to the earth and to others was articulated through the full embrace of nature and my grandparents' love. My parents were the first in their families to go to college. My mom, who is here today and is also a UNCSA graduate. Yeah. Hi, Mom. <laughs> Studied flute and voice, and she passed her love of music on to me. By the time I was 10, I was so besotted with the piano and classical music, I longed to be utterly immersed in it. And after learning about UNCSA from my piano teacher, being accepted into the school became my dream, my obsession. Finally, age 14, I arrived, wide-eyed and astonished to be surrounded by others my age who shared the same passions around music, dance, theater, literature. It was nothing short of miraculous. I lived in a constant state of ecstatic discovery, experiencing the poignant ache at the heart of the aria from Bach's Goldberg Variations, sensing the light behind Strauss's four last songs, the way the time and tonality stretched and stretched until nothing was left but the very luminosity of the sound itself. Again and again, I was broken open, enchanted and amazed by Faulkner, Balanchine, Beckett, Beethoven. But 
By the end of my junior year of college, I had come to the terrible realization that I did not have what it took to be a great pianist. And I knew that I did not want to be a mediocre one. And right around the time I was having this epiphany, the school hosted, for the first time ever, a symposium on careers in music. Two women from New York City, a famous classical music publicist and a prominent promoter, came to talk to students about the how-tos of headshots, demos, audition prep, and so on. And though I tried to listen to their presentation, I felt just utterly disconnected from their purpose. But then gradually, as I sat there listening, it started to dawn on me, wait a minute, those women live in New York City, they make their living working with artists, and they help them realize their dreams. That, that is what I want to do. Six months later, I was living in New York, interning at a startup management company which would shortly be bought by sports behemoth IMG, and my career in the music business was launched. From there, the piano sadly behind me, my career completely consumed me. It's not to say that I didn't seek and enjoy moments in nature, but the thrust of my life became completely yoked to work and to the relentless, singular focus that left little room for expansiveness and breath. But I have no complaints. I had an incredible run of it. Decades spent at IMG Artists, the heady thrill of going from startup to global leader in the field, working my way up from intern to managing director, and managing the careers of artists like Itzhak Perlman, Joshua Bell, Renee Fleming, Bill T. Jones, and so many others. From IMG, I was recruited to Universal Music to start a new label. Some people in the business called that going over to the dark side. <laughs> but I relished the challenge of creating a successful, ethos-based classic label, even in the middle of some of the most difficult times in the history of recorded music. I worked and worked and worked until spring of 2013 when I knew I had to stop. My psychic gas gauge was completely on empty and I knew I needed to do something to refill that very subtle vessel called the soul. I did something I had been dreaming of doing for years but had never made the time for. I signed up for a course on native plant medicine in the mountains of North Carolina. And when I came down off the mountain, as it were, the universe asked its usual, OK, and now what? And I remember sitting with friends at Lake Tomahawk in Black Mountain. I knew at that point that my future had to involve plants and the world of nature I felt I had forsaken so many years before. At the same time, a future without music seemed unthinkable. And I remember saying to my friends, oh my god, I despair. Where in the world am I ever going to find a place that calls equally upon my deep love of nature and my deep love of the arts. Back home, several days later, the phone rang. And out of the proverbial blue, a voice said, Hi, I'm with the firm conducting the search for the new president of the Saratoga Performing Arts Center, and your name keeps coming up. And you have to understand that SPAC the not-for-profit performing arts center that I now run, sits in the center of one of New York State's most beautiful parks. 2,400 acres of streams, geysers, curative mineral springs, and magnificent woodlands. Only a stone's throw from six million acres of Adirondack parkland. Our exquisite amphitheater seats 5,200 with a capacity for another 20,000 on the lawn. And we host New York City Ballet, the Philadelphia Orchestra, Chamber Music Society of Lincoln Center, Freihofer's Saratoga Jazz Festival, and scores of pop and rock shows across virtually every genre. 
In other words, I find myself now in a perfect confluence of man-made and natural beauty. I find myself at home. And I find that the heady years of IMG and Universal now seem like the preamble, the prelude to what is almost certainly my last professional chapter. And in this last chapter, my sense of purpose and urgency comes from the deep understanding of the profound importance of beauty, both man-made and natural, in this moment of deepening human crisis. In March 2020, as COVID closed our doors and threatened our very existence, we began to ask the question, who and what is SPAC when the amphitheater is dark? In an oddly prescient process in the fall of 2019, SPAC had begun rethinking and refashioning its mission to encompass a wider, more ample view of its place and its role, connecting people to people and people to the planet through a future that embraces an ever-expanding definition of the arts. And with this notion of connection as our North Star in uncharted territory, our sense of purpose settled upon the profound importance of beauty in human lives and SPAC's critical role in making those experiences possible. And so as COVID continued to strip the world of the most basic human contact and communal acts of gathering, we instinctively knew where to head and we set to work, recommitting ourselves to the service of art, artists, and community. If the years leading up to 2020 had seen SPAC deepening its commitment to education, diversity, inclusion, and service to the community, it was the devastating effects of the year 2020 which strengthened our resolve to redouble those efforts. And as we found ourselves a nation overwhelmed with grief and anger, fragile and riven by the ravages of the pandemic, racial injustice, social upheaval, and climate devastation, it was to art, nature, and beauty that we turned once again. We knew that through the example of the interconnectedness of the natural world and the power of the human imagination that one can envision a better world together and that in shared experiences of beauty, communities can find their way to unity. We knew that in a world where individuals can sit down side by side to share a meal, listen to music, savor a sunset, that our shared and fundamental humanity is far, far greater than the fleeting illusion of our differences. This, then, is the world you inhabit going forward. And with your gifts, a future to which you must dedicate yourselves, a place where the art you make reminds the world of our shared spark of humanity, a place where the beauty you fashion calls forth our better angels, a place you create that is a beacon, a healing refuge, a place where all people feel welcomed and all cultures feel celebrated, a place where, together, we cultivate the unbreakable bonds of empathy, love, and compassion. For it is in moments of encounters with great beauty, the transcendent grace of a Mozart aria, the majesty of a cathedral of pines, that we enter that state of wonder, a place without time or boundaries or strife or differences. On the top of a mountain, under the canopy of the night sky, we are both infinitesimal and infinite. 
luminous, radiant, and eternally interconnected. Thank you so much, and congratulations to you all.